And there's the storm spirit that we're all kind of waiting for, I suppose. The, the stamp uh, null talisman build never gets old with this hero. So storm spirit comes out now. I guess there's not really much to be said about this hero. It's just a very good uh, hero in the meta right now. Purely based on, on null talismans and being able to spam them out. Just having the, uh, the cheapest item build of all, but the most effective when it comes to storm. I wonder what they go for a, a counter, though, in the mid lane. Like, you have heroes... You don't have Imba, you have like heroes like TA if you wanted to go down that route. What, what else do you see here, John? Like you could go back to like the OD mid if you really feel a bit nasty. The Void Spirit's still there, but that hasn't been very popular as of late. Yeah, I think those options work well. Like the OD is pretty good. Um, just because you have the Marana to play with, they do go with the Leshrac instead. So you have some good push coming out from CI's rejects. You have that good lane matchup. Storm has a tough time running up and just getting the Vortex off by level three to get that double harassment off with a double overload and a static remnant. So Leshrac can manage the lane pretty well and it gives you really good push. That's something CIS rejects lacks a little bit in comparison to the outsiders. I mean, just with an Enchantress, you get a ton of push with a Dark Little Summoner. So the Leshrac kind of compensates and helps you wave clear and gives you really good magic damage for a Timbersaw. So it kind of covers all the bases here for CIS Rejects, gives, gives them a very fast draft to play with from the mid. And you don't really have a good way of punishing that here from outsiders. You could look for your pipe timing or at least the Hood of Defiance timing on Tim, jump up and kind of follow through from the Storm initiation. Beyond that, if a Leshrac manages to get a defensive item up, it does feel like he should still be able to stand steady have his team back him up. You have the sustain from the Undying. A really good value with something like that just wants to stand and survive like Leshrac. So it's all kind of tying in together for CIS Rejects. And we still haven't seen that big pause one. You know, options are still there. Like Tiny is still in the pool. Terrorblade, Medusa. Tiny. All these big cores that tend to scale well are still available. I can't believe Tiny is still available, by the way. Like of all heroes that, that's still in the draft right now, Tiny being available is the one that scares me the most. Outsiders, I mean, they have the opportunity to ban it right now if they so wish. Uh, CIS Rejects will also have one ban to go, I suppose, before we do get to, to continue. You know, another hero that does not get banned out or picked up here, John, one of your favorites, the Pugna. Uh, never got picked up here, and I realize it makes no, no real matter anyway now, as we do need a position one, but kind of a, a missed opportunity, I'm sure, for you, John, seeing the Storm Spirit there without a Pugna as its, uh, as its friend. Very, very sad indeed for that Storm, though. Outsiders... Still having to think about this uh, this final ban out now. Is there any particular pause ones that kind of rub you the wrong way, John, if you're outsiders? Mm. I mean, they kind of take care of the AM. That's a big one with the Storm, but <laughs> AM has not had a good track record, no. at least where we've seen it. So I uh, don't know if it would have made a big difference. I think um, they kind of covered themselves well here on Outsiders. They also have really good aggression. Timbersaw is very hard to beat in lane. I guess maybe an Ursa could be one way. It's back and forth. I mean, there's a lot of debate on who wins versus Timbersaw and Ursa. It goes back and forth. It's all down to players, and you can make that work your way. It can also work CIS Reject's way. Uh, Ursa Undying can be pretty good with, like, level 2 Tombstone. That slow after Earthshock can be pretty devastating. So maybe they could just go for that, secure their offlane here for the Tim, because we've seen Timbersaws go off to a slower start. If they don't hit their durability items, it just feels like you don't have that presence. They'll take care of the Faces Void instead. You do have a good combination there with Sand King epi uh, epicentering in and just jumping in. Leshrac with his AoE damage. So just keeping themselves safe. They don't have that hard hold to really stop the Faces Void from just jumping around. They only really have one, two stuns. Vortex plus Cookie. So keeping heroes pinned down from CIS Rejects can be an issue. I mean, if CIS Rejects mm. wants, like, a Slark could line up as well. It's equally slippery, hard to pin down with the heroes that uh, Outsiders has. And the lane against Timber Sauce, not amazing, but you do enjoy going up against these tanky heroes to build up Essence Shift. Yeah, it's a hero you always bring up with me, John. You you really want to see this position one Slark being picked up by one of these teams, but oh, it hasn't come out yet, John. I, I hope for your sake it does, so we can get to see the brilliance of the, that slippery Slark, though. Outsiders, first position one to be picked up here for themselves. They'll go Ooh. for the sniper. This hero has been coming out so much more often, John. I've seen it in like every pub game recently. I blame it on Thompson, right? We all know where it started. Thompson was playing at mid. I think it's going to be a safe lane sniper anyway, obviously, because you've got the storm. I don't know, John. What do you think? Is this a good hero right now? Do you like it? Do you think it's good against uh, CIS Rejects Draft? 
the jump of CIS Rejects isn't quite there. You know, it's not like they have a spirit brother that can just jump on top of the sniper, so gap closing is a little bit tougher. Oh. That is one way, though. CIS Rejects <laughs> do take the NP, so you can just teleport on top if you find him. It's it's a really great back and forth draft. Sniper's been something I've been ranting to you about as well as like a Deuce counter. So you do have that long range plinker here. And the drafts look I mean, you know, you see some elements from everyone else, but it's it's very much a very different breed here in EU. I'm loving the mm. difference here, the undying coming out from CIS rejects. I do worry about the pacing of outsiders, you know, sniper and storm. I mean, you mentioned a storm build, but you do somewhat want to run up, build something like the orchid down the line midway through. So there's an issue of item timings, although storm can maybe compensate, but you really need to win your lanes. I think the emphasis for lanes for outsiders is much bigger. They have to win the lanes to prevent that snowball effect from coming true from CIS rejects. Oh, fair enough. I mean, I'm, I'm just not sure how to feel about the profit last pick, John. I mean, it's something that we have seen uh, back in our region, but it, it's a bit hit and miss right now. I'm very curious to see how this one pans out as well. Like, and this is against the Storm, mind you, so it's not like it's the easiest Nature's Profit game in the world. Like, you, you might be able to snowball with this draft, but if you don't, against Sniper Storm, it's, it might be a little bit rough, is what I'm looking at. Though we'll get into it very, very soon. Game number one. Between Outsiders and CIS Rejects set to get underway. John and I, we're we very excited to see, our, see a fresh meta, a fresh couple teams here in this new region. See how it all pans out here for this best of three series. As we do get into it, John, game number one. Yeah, going to be in, in a bit. You know, one thing as well about this matchup, <laughs> you mentioned the NP having a hard time with Storm. You have to remember that level 20 talent, that leash, doesn't care for BKB, leaves you stuck there. Storm does not enjoy that. So you have really good hole there. And we do have our beautiful view flying in from our observer, Pityan, who is assisted by your friend, Nef Sensei. We do have yeah, that, that was Nef's lovely fault, by pan the way. View. <laughs> that, that was Nef's fault, just so everybody knows that uh, the two teams coming up. Nef, we know who's playing. That That's the point, right? Let, let Pythian do his job, please. <laughs> Why well, you got to throw him under the bus like that? Neff's been nothing but nice to you for the most part. He's he's tried to share his anime with you, Mike, and all you do is reject well, that's him. The problem. That's all you do. Well, that's the problem, John. He, he tried to share anime with me, and I I I ended up watching it, which is the uh the revolting part, unfortunately. So there you go, Neff. You're gonna get called out every single time. Still, wards being placed here, Jonathan. You saw the Marana placing wards towards the south. Love that ward right there by the uh by the staircase. Just giving so much vision of the the small camp pool and. Naturally, you can snipe careers very nicely there, thanks to Roger. So there'll probably be no level 1 team fight here for either side, as both will just be more comfortable to just secure those two bounty runes here. Though you'd love to have a, an early fight if you are CIS rejects, considering your draft, but it doesn't seem like outsiders are going to give them that opportunity. No, I don't think they mind too much at all. Outsiders are making a move for top, so they should be able to find that and just get themselves an even start, and they will. As we will see a little bit of harassment coming out from Ramsey. He does opt for Tango and one, <laughs> one franchise. <laughs> sniper! You know, we've got to have that little view of the sniper pick. It's not something you see every day. And I'll be some back and forth there. Just Roger and Sakota trading some hits. Not quite seeing the investment yet from Sakota. Not going for that impetus. Does go for the heal to sustain. And does have the Blightstone. So it is pretty painful for Roger to sustain that. And not going to be all too happy with that sort of trade, but he does have the tangos to back that up. Yeah. you got to appreciate as well Roger going for the uh, the block on the large camp immediately as well down at that bot lane. Just kind of ensuring that the uh, the large camp not going to be so readily available here. Though a nice arrow already landing on the sniper into the burrow strike. They might have pure already and they do. Oh, Roger and FNG already getting the tips out. The arrow just landing perfectly from Roger and well, they had enough damage. Yeah, it's, it's the one thing with laning is Sniper, level 1 is not great. I mean, you could try to harass out with Shrapnel, you want the headshot for some harassment in CS, but your range is pretty limited. Your attack range without that take aim is manageable for the Sand King and Amaranth to play there. And again, it's that double stun lane, Mike. You can just jump in, burst down. Sniper is very squishy, not much HP, and decent enough armor, but doesn't take too long to melt through with magic damage on hand. Yeah, we'll have a look at the top lane as well, John. You've got DM there and Yamich against FNG, and well, naturally Ramsey 666, of course, on the Prophet. Interesting lane here for the CIS rejects. Like again, the Prophet is the one thing I'm kind of not worried about during the laning stage, but more so later on. Do you, do you feel like there's a way Yamich and DM deal with this Prophet? So it seems like Ramsey should have the advantage. 
Yeah, it's just a steady farming lane. I think what you want to do here for the treants is just farm as much as you can as well. I mean, for the timber saw, just get as much farm as you possibly can. Hit your timing for Hooded Defiance or Vanguard, your one big tanky item, and just start to work that lane, you know? Make it unplayable, make it that you can't be harassed out. That's going to take level 3 to really kick in with level 2 reactive armor. And by then, it feels a lot better. Again, you have a counterpoint of that in dying. Take away some strength from Timbersov with all the armor in the world, he's still going to get a lot of damage off onto him. And even if Snapfire doesn't enjoy that, she is a strength hero, so she loses a lot of her own right click trade output every time FNG finds that decay. Yeah. Definitely could be very rough times against that Undying, that's for sure. FNG going to have the, the time of his life here with these decays. And how's that mid lane going? I mean, you've got, you've got Depress Kid and GPK against each other here on the Storm vs. Lesh. Seems like GPK's done a, a fantastic job in terms of CS, currently sitting at 13 and 2. Though so he's only just barely ahead of uh, Depressed Kid, and it does feel like the Lesh is going to hit that power spike very soon, where you, you just can't really lane against it anymore. Just the Lightning Storm spam, as well as the Split Earth, can be just too threatening for the Storm. And I think you're almost just approaching that stage right now. You're right at that point. 202, Split Earth and Lightning Storm to stat up, and it's very easy to line that up onto the Storm. And for the Storm, you hit level 3, you want to play with the Vortex, you want to play with that double overload, you don't have that opportunity oh, lane. with Lash Hall. They might have the Sanking, but no Miero. He's going to be alright to just juke around as... No, never mind, Zakoda. Right behind him, but not going to be able to get enough damage off. He's by the tier 1 tower, he'll be just fine, though the Burrow Strike into the arrow is going to land, but do they have the follow-up damage? He is going to be protected there by Pure. In fact, Roger, he's the one that goes too far and does get punished. They will take him out. And that's a great bounce back for Pure. He's been managing the lane really well. Again, after level 1, by level 2, value point and take aim. A lot harder to gap close on the sniper and just kind of abuse that low HP, low strength gain he has in lane. So you can just farm up here. Miero's still playing with a Sandstorm, but Sentry's down and he's oh. not very healthy in that Sand King. Uh, Miero? Yeah, he's just gone. I guess he just accepted the fact he was not going to be able to get away and just, just accepted his death. I may as well just hit some creeps while I'm here. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those things we mentioned, like sentries are going to be a big part here, not just for blocking camps, which are, are still staying blocked in CI's rechecks favor, but also just helping your Sand King sustain. If, if he's found out, the sniper can stand way far away from Sandstorm and just plink away. I mean, yeah, it's not that much damage, but if you get lucky with a couple of headshots, it starts to pile up there. It certainly does. It's a, a lot of damage you can just pump out. We are having a look again at top lane where it does seem like FNG on the Undying hasn't had the, the greatest presence in the world. I mean, he has, uh, he has done quite a bit, but oh, would you look at that? That is, uh, that is a very Ooh. close ward, just not quite on the mark. Yeah, again, just beautiful blocks from both sides. Some action though. Yeah, they take out the, uh, the Enchantress this time around, so the, the double stun combination again. You land the Burrow Strike, you get the arrow, it's it's all, it's not rocket science, but they are not going to find the Sniper. Pure's going to be just fine. He'll just keep that farm going here. No contest right now. Yeah, you don't mind that at all. The Sniper and the NP are both having really good lanes coming through. Lots of denies, lots of CS. Not much either offlaner can do. And the benefit here is that outsiders aren't losing their offlane. You know, I mean, you're not finding as much harassment out here from... Or mid lane. Timber sock, but Ooh. Cookie's gonna land. Depressed kid. He's actually gonna turn around here with the lightning storm. He does have the backup of FNG, but it doesn't seem like they're gonna go too far. Just a bit of a, a threat there from the Lesh. Go on, John. You were saying. Yeah, I think the one thing that Outsider is getting is that, you know, your Timber saw is still farming and he's not dying. So he's in a better spot than Nero is on the Sand King. You're going to be able to build up into that one big tanky item for yourself. DM's going to be able to just stake a lane and, you know, force some attention onto himself. Whereas the Sand King's going to have to play a farm game here. Like, Blink's going to be a bit longer than you'd want. You know, you're not going to be able to initiate with your team. You're not going to be able to set up for your team to jump in. And again, you don't have, like, a mobile mid here. So you are relying a lot on that Sand King Blink to really get the action going for the side of CIS Rejects. That you are. I mean, so far, at least for Miero, things aren't too bad here on the Sand King. He, he can catch up quite easily with some stacks, and but now he's doing a, a pretty decent job. You see Roger on that Marana, kind of roaming behind the mid lane now, just kind of maybe looking for an angle for an arrow here onto, uh, onto GPK. Not finding one quite yet, but assuming you do land that, it'd be a very quick and easy kill onto GPK. Go the other way, though. Back down towards the bot lane, where they are going to find Zakoda. 
won't really lead to much though as a depressed kid. That's a lot of farm being taken here on that left rack. He's going to be feeling very nice right now as Yamich. Well, he does make his way over. Soaks a bit of XP, but it's all a bit too late here for the snap fire. In fact, Ramses is going to spot him out, but doesn't even bother trying for the snap. We'll just let Yamich back his way out. And it does feel like CIS rejects. They are finding a lot of farm at the moment. That they are. Like, you did get some blocks out on Triangle. You know, sakota has been playing with that Enchant Creep, running in the Triangle, blocking large camp as often as he can, and has a Sentry down now. But they haven't really taken control of that top jungle. They haven't been able to, again, apply that laning pressure that you'd expect the Timbersaw to have. He is left alone, so eventually that tower can just fall from him, tanking through the hits and keeping the Creep Wave alive. But they've got to make moves from that Flash Farm, because Leshrac clears it fast. Nature's Prophet can kind of clear fast as well with Treants. And, again, one big factor for CIS Rejects here is, like, yeah, level 20 talent for NP can leash up a Storm, and that's level 20. And before that point, you don't have a good way of catching GPK. It's still reliant on a good angle from Miera to find his blink angle. And it's, that's easier said than none, especially with an Enchantress on the team. There's always the possibility for the Harpy Creep here from outsiders to just have the vision game going their way and prevent you from getting the jump on the storm so they haven't really stopped gpk from building up he's got double null only really needs power treads if he wants that and he can be active in this game now well they're already getting very active in the mid lane john like they're, they're pushing down this tier one tower and it is a bit of a slow process without the siege creep but they are certainly trying to get some action mm -hmm. here it's roger i'll throw the arrow out but it's not going to amount to much just trying to delay gpk from getting any more damage out it seems like they are trying to abuse the enchantress pick but Again, without the Siege Creep, they just don't have the damage for that tier 1 mid tower for now. Just almost prepping it for that 10 minute Siege Creep to come about. It seems like the, the rest of CIS rejects right now are just more than happy to keep securing their own farm. No stress in trying to defend that mid tier 1 tower. It's Ramses. He's going to run into Yamich, but they won't bother. It's back into the mid tier 1 tower. Depressed Kid is going to be around, along with Roger, to try and help defend this. And again, they're going to back off at the right moment, it seems. Outsiders not interested in going for a big team fight. They just want to try and force rotations. It's now GPK. He's going to rotate towards Ramses. There is some help around him. They want to try and go for the Prophet, but they aren't going to find him. Ramses is going to be just fine. Instead, once again, it seems like Outsiders just more than happy to control the areas of the map that they want. Right now being the dire side of things, even without the top tier 1 tower being taken. They are still just trying to kind of, kind of control that, that dire jungle. And that they will. Doesn't seem like CIS Rejects at all interested in trying to go for a fight. And rejects are just playing down bot. They already took that bot tier one. They have a lot of room to farm that area. Really interested in this build up here coming in from DM. He is going for an Atos. So he, he wants to give a little bit more control. We talked about that lack of control for the outsiders as well. This will give DM some catch potential in NO. Or oh, Miero, he's going to be alright for now. He'll go for an epicenter. He might drop beforehand though, and in fact he got it off, but it won't matter. No, he didn't. In fact, it did get cancelled. Never mind. He does end up dropping as the press kid. Dropping quite low himself, DM. He could go for a chase here. Does have the level 3 chains up, but it's got to be careful. It's still against the Leshrac. He doesn't want to overextend. See, IS rejects, they'll leave it be. That'll be enough for them. Does seem like outsiders now will get prepared for that top tier 1 tower. Of course, on the opposite side of the side of things, Ramsey's already getting the bottom tier one. So, bit of an even trade between these two teams. Nothing right home about. Yeah, just trading tier one. Pretty much, they took the tier one way earlier in CIS rejects, mainly from just Miero. Just shoving in the wave, Sniper couldn't really stop it at that point. They didn't want to invest the sentries anymore. They still have done a great job on Outsiders to get that build up on pure. Like, our Sniper already has Dragonlance, one Wraith Band up, going for the Maelstrom build. So, your typical... Sniper build up, just standing from far, getting some right flicks off. The build up for Ramses, well, his Maelstrom's already done. So split push coming through from the NP is going to be much stronger. And the NP does have that benefit of having teleportation. Sniper has to walk lane to lane. He's not really a big split pusher. And that should give more presence out for the rejects to keep their map control. Outsiders are starting to play top, as mentioned. And just keeping that invasion going. They haven't, they haven't gotten the Dark World Summoner again. Neither have they found a Harpy. And that is slowing down their progress on mid, but that mid tower is almost down. It's just going to take a little bit more of a shove in. Haven't seen the big team fights go out yet. Both teams very disciplined here. Mike just building up, although they catch out DM. 
Yeah, they do. DM gonna drop very quickly as you have so much magical damage there from CIS Rejects. So they'll take down the Timber. T1 mid still standing, but Zagoda, it started once again. Gonna force the Glyph out here from, from CIS Rejects and that'll be about it once again. They're there to defend that mid T1. Not letting it go down quite yet. And without the Timber Sword, seems like you are gonna have to kind of take a step back and, and relax a little bit. Though if you're outsiders, John, considering how well Pure's farming right now on that Sniper, you don't really care. You're just more than happy to let the sniper keep hitting creeps. Yeah, I mean, no one's really contested pure. They've already got the blink up on Miera. They haven't made any movement out from CIS Rejects to jump the sniper. Uh, pure has been doing a good job of just popping in lane close to tower, go back to jungle, farm up. His team's been happy to give him that space as well. And the same thing goes for CIS Rejects, though. Ramses has been farming up a storm. Uh, again, Maelstrom up straight for the BKB, so he's going to be in fighting form relatively soon. And that does mean that they'll eventually have the capability to just show up anywhere on the map and make a play. They are going for a smoke play now on the rejects end. They do not pop the moonlight for this. In fact, they don't have it up. No six yet in Roger, but should still find an angle here. The problem is DM might break the smoke. Even Zakoda might do it in the end. It's not going to be that easy to take down. Doesn't seem like CIS rejects going to find what they wanted. In this Radiant Triangle, they might just have to let things go. They will start to head back towards their own side of the map. Lines have been drawn out pretty much exactly where Outsiders are right now, but it's exactly where they aren't on CIS Rejects. So Depressed Kid, he might just try and bait as the Leshrac, but nobody's going to take it. They'll just let him take those creep waves, and it does seem like CIS Rejects, they'll try to wrap around. Towards the bottom side of the map, they might find GPK very soon, though he'll be the one to make the jump in. On to Muero, with the cookie out and the scatter blast, it's not going to be enough, and now a double Ooh. burrow strike into the arrow, onto the snap fire. GPK, he's still trying to fight, but it's not going to work. Tips out onto the Sand King. Miero, he was just able to survive the initial onslaught. Damn, in fact, that's a Sand King without... Oh, Zakoda. Yeah, Zakoda. He's been caught out to boot. With the Epicenter and the Sandstorm, they're going to have plenty of damage. So much work being done by this Sand King already, John. And it's just off that blink, and he didn't even have to really use that blink in the last fight. He just had to get a good burst strike off. His team is ready to back him up. And this is the point where the Rejects lineup does feel like it kicks into gear. We talked about Outsiders going a bit slower with a Storm, with a Termisaw, and the Sniper. They're not going to have as much presence out, not as many opportunities to be aggressive. And the rejects can start finding their fights. And they don't even need to wait for Epicenter. All you really want is Burst Strike Arrow. If you get that off every single time, Ramses could be farming elsewhere. Teleportation's in. And you just we clean go. up. And GPK. Oh. He's going to cop an arrow here from Roger. And it looks like it might just be enough. He does get the Yules off oh. in time. But he's still going to drop here to the split earth of the press kid. In fact, it was the press kid's Yules that was being committed. Just to ensure GPK does drop. They do lose the Sand King, but it's well worth the trade. And just look at the rejects. They, they keep smoking up. They're, they're not done. They know they've got an opportunity. They don't have to wait for ults. They might find Sakoda. Not the big kill yeah. they'd want, but still a kill. Unable to get in range for the, the Yule Scepter there. Roger will just take the, take the Wild Wing Ripper, and that'll be enough for him. It does seem like now you are hitting a bit of a spike throughout this 15-minute mark for CIS rejects. You imagine they just want to keep moving now, John. I mean, you're, you're so kind of farmed on Ramses and the press kit at the moment, there's just no need to hold back. Your lineup really just wants to keep fighting for the next 10 to 15 minutes. You don't really want to rest except maybe the NP, but again, teleportation's there. You can always show up where team's playing and another smoke. That's the second smoke back-to-back -back here. Yeah, but Zakoda's going to break it once again. Nero going to find him. The Burrow Strike, that should be enough to set up, and it will be. But as you mentioned, that's not really the kill they want. The Roger getting a very nice ward down. And that Radiant Triangle does have full vision here of Yamich who thinks he's trying to be sneaky, but a great oh. Burrow strike. Miero again with a double stun out. Just going to wipe them out here. CIS Rejects using this power spike perfectly. There's no even move into the Roshan pit now. Why the hell not? It's going to be a really, really quick rush. The ward wars are still ongoing as well right outside of range. That that was the ward from their failed smoke. So they did get a lot of use out from that vision, even though they didn't find that kill. Going into the Roshan, very well protected with all the wards they have. And now you have to deal with two lives in the press kit. Like, it, it's so difficult at this point to handle that less. You don't have early VKBs. You don't even have a pipe being built up by DM. He is still opting for the Kai'Sanj. 
uh, not even upgrading Cloak to Hood of Defiance. So he's just super susceptible in that front line. You have so much magic damage here from the rejects. Like, the Lesh alone melts through you and you know, the Undying just softens you up so much. EHP, again, is a big factor. You might have all the armor in the world, but you need the strength to back that up. And Undying takes that strength away on the Timbersaw. So, have to kind of watch yourself here on the Outsiders. They are still getting farm on Pure. We haven't seen the impact of that Sniper yet, Mike, but he is going for that BKB next. Just needs the disassembly on the Dragonlance and the recipe, and he might be able to put a dent in this momentum for the Rejects. Well, my only problem with that is, John, is Ramses is quite frankly just overtaking him now in net worth and with the profit it just feels like you're going to be able to farm so much faster with that teleportation available or oh, even the press kid overtaking the sniper now and it does feel like one of those heroes where if you're not completely ahead against a hero like profit who can just sneak up right beside you could be very detrimental here to to the outsiders as well cis rejects they're going to keep trying to push that tier one top tower down now using that edict of the press kid to get it done it doesn't seem like outsiders are at all interested in trying to go for a bit of a fight to defend this. Instead, they'll just rotate across the map and maybe try to sort out a trade in terms of objectives. Though it doesn't even seem like they're going to be able to find that. Instead, right now, just trying to be in the safety of the die jungle. Is Miero looking for a burrow? Mm. Is going to find it onto the edge. Unfortunately for him, that was a TP used up. It won't matter too much, though. He's going to die anyway. Zakoda gone. And now they want a bit more with this Moonlight Shadow. Yamich, the, the closest target to them, but instead, Ramsey's already going on to GPK. GPK gonna go for a quick zip DP out, though, and is gonna be just fine. So they won't find anything else, just the inch kill, but it's still something. And that is big, though, to save on GPK. The fact that he doesn't die from that rotation because they were focused elsewhere means he has his BKB. So BKB, double null, power treads, again, pretty much all you need on a storm to stand and fight. And that will allow a lot more frontline presence. The issue is the follow-up. Like, you don't have that BKB on DM, you don't have that BKB yet on Pure. So right now, it's all about the storm finding a good isolated hero. And as we've seen the rejects play, they haven't been degrouping too much. It's only Ramsey staying away, everyone else has grouped up as four for the most part. No, Roger could be in big trouble here. He's right underneath the vision. In fact, never mind Ramsey's. He's going to be the one to jump right in. Nice cookie away from Yamich. In the meantime, though, Miero with a great burrow strike, finding the storm. They're even going to find Z Zakoda. Into the mid tier two tower they go. And I'll tell you what, John, this Sand King, he's been right on target every single time. Yeah, Miero's been on point. Like that early kill on the sniper, just slowing down Pearson a little bit more, and all the aggressions he's had. And he died a couple of times in lane. Not the biggest issue. Sand King can just farm back up. With the sandstorm, doesn't take too long to build up. And again, that's just all with a blink. There's nothing else. Just a blink bracer right now, building into the BKB. It's going to be even tougher to handle him once that's up. You do have your second BKB coming out here for Outsiders. Pure has his ready to go. But again, he hasn't been showing up to these engagements anyway. You could argue that high ground defense here for Outsiders is looking pretty good. It is a sniper game. You could hold off a siege for a very long time. But as you mentioned earlier on, like our sniper is lagging behind the network here. He just can't farm as effectively as the press kit or Ramses can with her mobility and wave clear. Yeah, and it feels like his map's shrinking quite a bit here for Pure. They are going to go for a bit of a smoke and maybe use Pure as bait as he's trying to move his way up slowly. The arrow though, it seems like he's just ready for it here on the Sand King as outside is still smoked up in the tree line, waiting very patiently for a jump towards that tier 2 mid tower, or rather bot tower, but no oh, Miero. And the rest of his team realizing that that is probably a bait. They are going to back off at the right moment and well, nothing's going to come out of it. Still smoked up. They will try to react and move into the mid lane here for outsiders. But who do they catch? Answer is nobody. It's all down to the great vision again coming out from CIS Rejects. They had this great ward behind the tier 2. No sentry to spot it. They saw a couple of heroes walking in. They might have even seen the smoke and they just managed it. You know, bail out. They knew Pure was acting as bait. They don't take the risk. They reset. They still have some time in that Aegis. Not much. 20 seconds left. So they could have maybe forced that fight if they wanted to. They do Moonlight, but that is under wards. So, kind of spotted out. But we'll see if they still manage to work this. Outsiders as well, already on the retreat. So, you're seeing a lot of vision games coming out here, Mike. Just all off the back of good map reading and, of course, good wards. Thing is though, like even with just popping Moonlight and running across the map like that, you are forcing outsiders to just get out of their triangle. 
It, it might seem small, but it's just more time that Pua is not able to hit creeps. And that is going to be quite detrimental. Like, he's still falling very far behind Ramsey's now on that profit. Speaking of Ramsey's, Shadow Blade up, BKB up. Very, very happy in H's profit at the moment. And it's one of those things. Like, Ramsey's, he's always going to be able to just TP right next to the sniper whenever he needs to. In the middle of a team fight and just man fighting. But now he just goes to the Silver Edge and feels like once you've got that available, you're more than happy to get started. See, he's going to TP down bot towards DM. We'll go for the Sprout up, but that's not going to hold DM down. He'll try to chain away, but Depressed Kid going to find the Yule Scepter into the Split Earth. Do they have the damage, though? Not quite. Glimmer Cape will be there from Yamich. Is now Depressed Kid going to get caught out. GPK moving in. They've got the damage. They'll take the Leshrac down, and maybe if they can find Ramses, it'd be such a great feeling here. But CIS Rejects, they have grouped up. Sakoda hasn't realized yet. Epicenter Burrow Strike is out, but GPK, he has the BKB up. The Sanking's gone too far. They'll lose another. And CIS Rejects, they get nothing out of that. Outsiders, they get everything. They find some good punishment on Outsiders. Finally using those BKBs we saw earlier on. They didn't have the opportunity to use them in big fights. They get some good punishment here. They don't really manage to find Ramses, but they force him to use his BKB defensively as well. And we're seeing some issues with the rejects. Uh, maybe getting a bit too keen. That was a two-man rotation out, and the rest of the team wasn't quite in range to immediately have the epicenter, immediately have the follow-up burst strike and the arrow stuns. So the control was lacking to burst someone like DM down. And just with that opening, an outsider smells blood, trying to go for something. Don't quite find Ramses with that zip, but... They are, you know, retaking parts of the map. They aren't being, they aren't clearing out the wards though. It's inside of the reject still has good info on that bot jungle area. And they are just playing in their own jungle now. So, just a rebalancing out. Still very important kills. And again, a really big BKB reveal for GPK. Once he has that Ags up on the Storm Mike, the team fights look a lot better for Outsiders once that's up. Oh, absolutely. Speaking of things being up, John, I mean, this Nature's Prophet level 20 talent's coming up soon. The uh, Sprout Leashes, that's what, one of your favorites. One of the ones you oh. pointed out as soon as the patch came out, John. How, how do you feel about that? Oh, it's it's going to be great to handle the storm. <laughs> like, you leash him up, doesn't care for BKB. How is that balanced? I swear, like, there it is. He gets a leash, of course. I mean, mischance sounds great, but you can always force staff out of the Sprout anyway. It doesn't matter. Very, a very leash. Oh, 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 this is this is gonna be very awkward for GPK. He's gonna feel safe. He has to know that the level twenty is gonna be up soon for Ramses. Should uh, kind of watch his spacing. Try to get that jump on the NP first as a priority target. Rejects do moonlight once more, but aren't really too forward here. They do lose their wards down in the bot jungle now, so this is a fairly blind movement out. And the outsiders do manage to find a good spot in the map to just stay in. So. Avoiding more engagements once more. But as you mentioned before, every time Moonlight's pop, it just forces the side of Outsiders to clump up, stay very defensive while Rejects just get more efficient on the map. They, they just keep split pushing, keep clearing out opposite sides away from Ramses and just watch the Nature's Prophet build up. Like, he has his full Silver Edge now. So he has a crit, he has an escape. Uh, with the Invis, he's got a lot of damage and can just split push as he wants. Oh, there's going to be a smoke out though. GPK going to be spotted. Ramses, he'll go for the leash in with the Burrow Strike out from Miero, but it's not enough yet. GPK, he's going to try and turn onto the Nature's Prophet, but he's dropping too low. Forced to zip TP away, but he's going to be fine. Meanwhile, TP towards the south is going to find Zakoda. They do at least have the inch to try and go for, and they will be able to have it their way with them. They have one. They certainly don't find a very good target though. That's probably the worst one you could have found. It's uh, not too bad for the outsiders, all things considered. You know, they manage to save your skin, don't manage to really lose out on GPK. They do have a good way of breaking that leash. A cookie can at least get you out of dodge. So as long as the damage is around, GPK is not too worried. And I guess that's one saving grace for outsiders at the moment. Rejects though, still with a 9k lead, still feeling great. Still a lot of room to grow on that NP. Ramsey's already has the shard to be really annoying with the split push. Going for the... Uh, uh, satanic next just to have that longevity into these prolonged fights outsiders will go for the smoke play again it's their turn to look for that angle they know that yeah, the attempt was out from rejects they don't have forward vision as well so again fairly blind in the movement out but if they find that opportunity i mean you just need a thousand more gold for gpk a couple of kills here could land your axe 
It almost seems like they've just smoked up to make sure they can go back to their triangle, to be honest with you, John. Like, they're grouped up together, but it, it's clear that without the vision, they don't want to move out of this triangle. That's fair enough. They are still 9k behind. So instead, they'll hang around. They'll, they'll just remain in the secure part of the map for themselves. And it seems like both teams are just going to start prepping up for Roshan now. It is going to be scouted out by this Enchantress. CIS rejects. They are still going to be around. FNG... Let's move his way up to Press Kid right behind him. They're just kind of eyeing out GPK with a great Observer Ward. They might have him too. Burrow Strike is out, but a great cookie. Going to allow the follow-up stun to miss as GPK is going to zip his way right out of here. And Yumich is going to be the one to drop. But another great cookie out from Yumich. That'll allow GPK to just not end up dying. And they've got to find a way here in Rejects to catch both of them up. You know, catch the catch the snap fire along with the storm in your initial stun and then just kind of clean up from there you have enough of a window i think to clean up the storm as long as the cookie doesn't come through so if you get the split earth and arrow that's going to be enough even if the split uh, even if the cookie comes afterwards again you're not finding the biggest ones for rejects but they are finding more kills again they're working the map a lot better outsiders still in a position to fight if they wanted to Holding control of their triangle preventing a move up into roshan and having the shrapnel to play with the scout not letting the rejects kind of have that objective, but you do have to worry about Ramsey's farm here, Mike. And Satanic's almost done here. And once that's up, I'm fairly certain that NP is just going to be willing to really fight out. BKB, Satanic, Silver Edge, Maelstrom, you're pretty much set to just hold your ground and right-click as you want there. Roshan, though, still being watched here, John. They've got the Harpy available. The, the Harpy scout, scout is up. Roshan will get started, it seems. So yeah, Balance Cam is the right way to put it. Get that Harpy Scout yeah. going, you've just got unlimited vision right on top of Roshan. And it just feels like there's no way for outsiders to move into this pit now. Like, how do you sneak no. into this pit? They're gonna smoke up, they're gonna try. Like, that CIS reject smoking up, never mind. They won't even try. They didn't even know that it might have been happening. CIS rejects, they'll walk away with the Aegis for themselves. Depressed Kid will take it. It seems like outsiders just no interest whatsoever in trying to contest. And that's something I want to point out. Roger had a helm of the Dominator much earlier on. So he's been dominating whatever creep he sees from the Enchantress, saving the arrow for an actual stun. <laughs> and of course, having access to that Harpy creep. Very balanced thing. Very balanced neutral, Mike. It flies around. Yeah. It eats 2.5% of your max mana. You don't have much. So you actually don't really burn mana while flying. It's, uh, it's really balanced. What, what can you do? And again, this game has been boiling down to vision every single time. We've seen a lot of movements counteracted by wards. We've seen... Just so much called off from that oh, vision. Roger. Here we go. Rodamatos gonna hold him down, but he will just walk or rather leap away from the kisses. Outsiders, not ready yet as Dakota already gonna drop here to Ramsey's, but he'll just BKB TP up. He's gonna be just fine. They got the Ench, but that's about all they're gonna get. Outsiders unable to find anything for their trouble. A CIS rejects. They are still waiting for another initiation. They might go on to GPK here with the epicenter. In fact, never mind. They never ended up popping it, but it may not matter. GPK, he'll still go for a vortex out. The epicenter was too late in the end. They just don't have the damage output. And so now FNG, he oh, might pure. drop, but they'll try out to the sniper. Pure, he's going to have to man fight this one out. He's leashed in tight to the sprout. He still will be able to get away as DM. He's the one in trouble, but he also gets his way out of there. Is now depressed kid. He's the one dropping low. He will go down with the Aegis up. Miero, he moved in for a stun. Just to allow them to disengage here on CIS rejects, and that's exactly what they'll do. So Aegis goes kind of the wayside. CIS rejects, they've seen enough, they'll back off for now. Yeah, they don't lose too much here on rejects, and they will find a double damage as well. Couldn't give that bottle over to Ramsey, so kind of pretty set up for whatever next play they want. Gleipnir, just a little bit off here for Ramsey, waiting for the recipes to be done. Oh, even more control to hold down that sniper. And we are seeing the investment from Pure is paying off. It is a bit challenging to jump him now with his long duration BKB. He's still fresh in that last fight. Down to 8 seconds now, so still a big window for him to work his positioning well. And once he has his Concussive Grenade up, once he has that Ag Shard up, it's going to be, again, relatively easy to fix your positioning there. So, uh, Outsiders, despite not finding these fights, despite not being as efficient on the map, it's still a challenge to pierce high ground, Mike, because, you know what, you've got Sniper, you've got Ags on Storm. There are a lot of ways to counterplay and stall out here for the Outsiders. There is certainly plenty of ways right now, but... 
it, it's one of those things though, like CIS rejects, they're just able to farm forever. Like, you still got a profit. It's outsiders, they're gonna smoke up this fort, they'll move in. Towards the bottom side the of the map, the CIS rejects, they seem to know what's going on, and yeah, the harpy creep. Once that smoke breaks, they're gonna know. Zakoda is spotted, Roger, no, a great vortex out, GPK, he's gonna set up for the team. FNG, he's barely surviving, it's GPK, he'll get himself out, at least for now. They'll try to chase him down, but he's fine. Instead, they'll get the snap fire. DM, he's gonna drop to boot. Just mess all over the map. As Pure does take down Miero. And that'll be a two for three trade. Just a very kind of split up engagement. But it does go the way of Outsiders. Just really good BKB use out coming there from Pure. Uh, waiting for the burst rock to be committed first and just walks away. They couldn't even lock in the storm. It's been an issue to hold down GPK now. His BKB is down to six seconds though, so his window isn't that big, but you don't need that big of a window on Storm to really get yourself out to safety. You do have to deal with Ramsey at level 25 now though. He does have that TP with no cooldown. He can just constantly split push with his shards up. He can just constantly apply that laning pressure, but again, you've got Sniper, you've got Storm. You have ways of clearing out the creep waves as well. So split push from Ramsey's is more of a nuisance than anything else. I think for the side of the rejects, they need to they need to be the aggressors here. They can't afford to be jumped on by GPK every time. And again, when they do jump in for the storm, you've got to be able to lock in the snapper. Or even if you jump the sniper, you have to lock in Yamich. You have to prevent that cookie from getting that save off. It breaks up their stuns here on the side of the CIS rejects. And Yamich has been doing a lot of work. His stuns and the glimmer cape saves has just been making it really hard for the side of the rejects to find anything in these past few engagements like this, this is a around the time where you know you're dealing with sniper you're dealing with storm it does feel like the game slows down massively for the opposite side because your sniper is kind of ready to go here another moonlight shadow being committed here by cis rejects but it's going to be to, to relocate across the map. So that never mind mid lane. They're going to set up onto the inch. That should be one dead, but a nice vortex. GPK turning it around once again. It's going to be Miero for Zakoda for now. They need to back off on CIS rejects. Ramses, he'll try for the TP out. Do they have oh, the run of Atos? No. They do. They'll lock him down. He's forced to BKB up, but it's not going to matter. He's gone. It's the press kid. He'll BKB himself. FNG already down as they'll chase down the last piece of the puzzle. It's going to be the Leshrac. Can he get himself out? It sure as hell doesn't seem like it, but Ooh. no, never mind. They missed the scatter blast. The press kid, he'll be able to blink out and he'll survive another day. But a great team fight here from outsiders. And it does seem like the tides are slowly turning. Yeah, they've just got really good angles. GPK has been finding all these big zips across with a vortex, tying in really nicely with some great kisses coming out from Yamich. And the rejects, it does feel like their positioning is starting to get a little bit off here. Like Ramses isn't able to concentrate on the sniper. He's not able to jump the front line. He has to deal with the front line to do the damage for the team. Trudeau's BKBs because it just nullifies your presence on the left rack. So. Our Nature's Prophet is forced to play the front line, try to deal with Timbersaw, try to deal with a really jumpy storm. And that just gives Pure all the room in the world in the back line to just play how he wants. Like, it's supposed to be the NP answer to the sniper, but we just haven't seen that movement come through from Ramses here. We have not. It's one of the things with the Nature's Prophet, right? Like, it's it's still kind of out of meta hero. It's a bit left field and it hits hard, but even with all this net worth, it still kind of falls flat at times. The outsiders now looking to feel a bit more confident. Into the mid lane they go. GPK has been very effective with this Aghanim Scepter. And LE Vortex paying off dividends here for outsiders. CIS rejects. Just trying to get some wards down, trying to get some information on outsiders for now. They will get a little bit. They hang around the right side of the map. Outsiders, they'll take the left. Because Roshan, still a while away from spawning up. It's not like Outsiders really playing for that, but I, I suppose you could try to control the area around Roshan Peters. Well, there is going to be a four-man smoke up here, John. Just look at the vision the Harpy gives. There's a big vision circle around him in that smoke. Oh, GPK! He completely jukes out the Burrow Strike and now the Vortex. Into the Kisses out. Poor old FNG. He's just going to have to cop it. That over the Undying gone. Depressed kid. He's still going to try and move him, but another great cookie out from the snap by Yamich. He is just doing so much work. 
Lashes will turn right back around with a vortex out onto the lash rack. The press gets gone. Miero, he'll move in with the epicenter, but it's not going to be enough. He'll drop to boot. Roger is trying to get out himself, but it's not going to be there. Uh, Ramses, he's going to blink right in. He does find the tinker. That'll be about it, I think. Ramses, he should not move in once again. Zakoda, he'll take the uh, the Harpy Scout for himself this time. Yeah, it's a, it's a fight of balance. I mean, you had some, that was a pretty decent smoke. They were outside of a vision range. They had a Harpy to give them AOE vision while smoked up at night. They just couldn't make it work. Again, the Reflex is coming through from GPK. React way too fast. Your hold coming through from the Rejects is... It's getting a bit tough to get the chain stuns off. And Pure still just stands way far in the back. Like, you have no answer for the Sniper. Your NP is forced to jump the front line. Pure is just hitting like a madman in the back. And now the Roshan's open as well. Rosh number three. Cheese refresh on deck as well. So refresh ready. Double Vortex down the line. And GPK is going to have a really good time initiating for the team. Size, side of the reject still trying to play here though. Yeah, they might find Zakoda. Well, in fact, they won't. Pure, uh, he's just going to show up and just do sniper things. Just start hitting people. It's one of the things, right? Like, w with take aim and headshot, you just can't man fight this hero. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's really annoying. Uh, I think, again, that's where Ramses has to step in. He has to be able to jump the sniper. It is easier said than done at this point. You know, I mean, purest positioning has been perfect. GPK has been initiating for the team, making things very awkward for the rejects. And it's just getting harder and harder for Rejects to leverage that chain control. Like, Burrow Strike Arrow is still really good. Split Earth follow-up is there. But we've seen time and time again just the cookie saves, just the Glimmer Capes, just that Zip and Vortex from GPK. If the Rejects don't manage to pop their BKBs fast enough, they don't have an opportunity to counteract. And even then, Outsiders also have their BKBs to play with, which nullifies their Lush, forces Ramses to try to do damage. He is doing decent damage, but it's just not enough. And there's, it's much easier for outsiders to find her angst. Mid lane, depressed kid. He's okay, the Vortex. He was just out of range for that. If the Vortex doesn't end up landing, depressed kid. He's just fine. You see bot lane, John. CIS rejects. They just won't stop the split push. It's always the, the one really annoying thing against this Prophet. Is you've always got the split push available. It's DM. He's going to try and move in now to try and defend this. Miero was thinking about an epicenter, but thinks better of it. We'll even be for now as outsiders. We'll smoke up across the map trying to find themselves a target. And they may just. GPK running right towards Miero and Roger. But that Harpy Scout. Just so much vision. Not allowing the sneak attack here from GPK. As everybody backs off safely. And man, that, that one creep. It just does so much work. Yep. Very balanced creep. <laughs> Again, this game's been a lot in the vision, Mike. Uh, it's all about the ward placement, all about the harpy creep trading back and forth with Sakoda. That Helm of the Dominator pickup has been paying dividends here for Roger. And they catch one. The DM, he's going to get the BKB off in time, and it does seem like he's going to be just fine. In fact, now they might turn around. Here comes GPK, but he's out of mana. He's still going to keep going. In fact, never mind. He's good. We'll take one down. On to another we go. DM is gone. Ramses, he's going to be just fine. Hmm. I mean, you find a decent kill to trade away for your Marana. You do manage to take the gem back here for the rejects, but you start to wonder about scale. The GPK, BKB's TPs. They do find Sakoda, so GPK just bailing out. Again, not a big kill on the edge at this point. But you start to worry about scaling late game out now, Mike, because you're dealing with a Snapfire as well from the side of Outsiders. Level 20 is up for Yamich. Little Shredder using the attack damage. Has a Desolator on hand to just amp out the output of everyone on his team with a right click. Uh, it gets tough. Like, yeah, you have that Sprout. We haven't seen Ramses really hammer anyone in. And again, the save is there from the Snapfire. So your control is, it's not doing as much as you'd expect in this game. And the Rejects still have a 9k lead, but they haven't made progress on high ground. They haven't been able to pierce through that last tier two. Same thing goes for Outsiders, though. They're stuck on their side of the of the map, but it does feel like as this game scales on, it's a sniper game, Mike. I mean, how, how do you deal with that towards late game? Like, how do you manage this guy and potentially a core snapfire transition here? 
GPK always found himself a Sand King. Miero, oh, but never mind, that's... Miero has help around. Depressed gonna move in with the Split Earth. GPK, he may have gone too far, and he has. Yamich still going with the Kisses. It's not gonna be enough. In fact, Pure, he's forced to just TP away as his friends are falling. He just couldn't do anything about it. That's a nice turnaround here for CIS Rejects now, as they can maybe find that tier, top tier 2 tower. It'll be the, the final outer tower here for CIS Rejects if they can secure it. But like you said, John, it's against the sniper. <laughs> Things can get a, a little bit tough when you are against this hero. Yeah, shrapnel just melts through the treants. And yeah, not much you can really do about that. The big reveal there, Mike, is that Hex on the pressed kit. Like we've seen how well GPK has been with his BKB use. He always saves it for getting that max window of opportunity. So he wants to wait for that commitment from the Sand King first. Did not expect that Hex. So he's caught off guard. Gets punished for it. Good follow through from Ramses this time, using the Sprout after the cookie. So getting that lock in to follow through with the damage onto the Storm. And they just managed to finally make it work. They take the lead back to 14k. I mean, it's not like the Rejects lost the lead in time at all in this game, despite taking some losses. They have maintained themselves up there. But they do finally find some big kills. They still have that issue with Pure. The Sniper is still going to be this big nuisance in this game. Um, Hold on a is minute. working towards that sift blink. Yeah, Zakoda's cla uh, Zakoda's complaining about lagging mouse, John. I is yeah. this a wireless mouse thing, John? I've never owned one before. Maybe you know when battery runs slow and can run like that. Sometimes it's a driver interference issue. Sometimes mm -hmm. your mouse is just acting up. It could be a lot. You know, trivia <laughs> time says FNG. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, FNG, wrong casters, but uh, I like the joke, FNG. Thank you for that. Go on, what's the answer? Zero. <laughs> I mean, hey, 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 kilts aren't everything, okay? He's been setting up. He's had great vortexes. He's been breaking up the ganks really well. And he's been a massive nuisance. <laughs> uh, you got to love that. You know, the friendship here. Yeah, I do. I guess that's one big similarity between our regions, right, John? This is something that would happen in a CA lot. Just just the trash talk and the pauses. You'd love to see it. Oh, yeah. Do get the go-ahead. <laughs> G having to do GPK <laughs> dirty. I mean, I mean, he's had such great impact in the storm. You know, zero kills, who cares? He's been zipping in, setting up. He's been giving the kills to his other cores. He doesn't need the kills anymore, you know? He's, he's been doing his job, Mike. So, FNG, uh -oh. spicy. Oh. Now, Zakoda's doing his job too, John. And that's uh, dying to Ramses <laughs> for now. Ramses, enjoying himself at the moment on this uh, level 29 profit. Almost maxed out, John. Just just half a level away from level 30. You know, nothing wrong with that. Very, very strong hero. Yeah. Yeah, I am curious how the NP 100% mischance on Sprout works. Is there a lingering effect if you walk out of Sprout? You know, does it linger for a second? Does that pierce BKB? Because well, that, that could be really useful against the sniper. You can't walk out if you're, if you're leashed, John. That's, that's the point, isn't it? No, but it Cookie works. can push you out, right? Like the cookie, right. We've seen the Cookie pop you out. So I'm wondering if there's a linger effect for that or it just immediately breaks. I don't know, you know? It's like, it's one of those things. You don't see it too often, Mike. Suppose you don't, John. Thankfully, we don't. Outsiders, <laughs> still grouped up on their high ground. 16k behind, but you're 43 minutes into the game. Like, it it starts to feel like the 16k just doesn't matter anymore because pretty no. much all of it's onto this Nature's Prophet, who's now got an Eye of Skadi up and has no boots available. This is the... Uh, Who needs boots? The, the, well, it's the Chad Nature's Prophet, John. You don't walk. You simply teleport. Yeah. You know, you don't need boots where you're going. He has the Swift Blink as well. So definitely not necessary. He can get anywhere he wants with no trouble in the world. The issue is he can't get onto that high ground, Mike. Because it's a sniper. It, it's a storm. It's a snap fire going semi-core. It's an enchantress you can also go semi-core with just a hurricane fight. Like, there's a lot of scaling on outsiders. There's a lot of high ground hold. They, ca they also can't go outside of their high ground, though. They can't siege. They have to contest the next Roshan for sure. But yeah, the rejects still have their harpy creep watching Roche. So try approaching that. That's going to be an issue. They will smoke, though. They might find an angle. We'll see if GPK will finally find a kill here. We shall, John. They are going to move in. Don't, don't do GPK like that, by the way. Johnny, already, you already got done by FNG. Leave the poor man alone. <laughs> they are going to move in. GPK, he's been doing a fantastic job this game, number one. 
TIS rejects. They're going to back off. It seems like they are well aware that something is wrong. And of course, in the meantime, Nature's Prophet pushes down the bot tier 3 tower. Surprise, surprise. Right, Look at this rat. Look at the bot tier 3. It's gone. Raxes are gone as well. D <laughs> DM, he's trying to get there in time to defend this. But, well, there goes the range rats. Who needs to fight when you could just split push? Yeah, I guess that's one way. You know, if they do dip out for the smoke, they make it pretty obvious with the D ward on the laning ward. You have that opportunity to just rip through. Sniper is not there to defend. Treant can try. It takes a little bit more. And once Ramses hits level 30, Mike, times 2.5 HP on Treant. going to be a bit of a process clearing that out as well for the sports. And even the Tim is going to take a little bit more time in that. So still a little bit more left for the rejects. We'll see if that opportunity presents itself once more. I think you have to be ready to have Pure come in for the defense. Or at least have someone to take care of that push. You can't allow your racks to fall for free. Roche. 15 seconds away, both sides knowing that the Roshan's going to be pivotal. Roshan number four with everything on it. So all the extras loaded in there. Again, <laughs> Rejex just has her Harpy Creep. I'm surprised we're not seeing a Harpy Creep here from Sakoda. It has the Centaur, but no Flying Creep of her own for balance here. Well, it's not like they, they can just spawn the Creep whenever they want, John. I mean, Sakoda's uh, Creeps, they expire. He, he may as well buy a, you know, a Helm himself. Just have a permanent Harpy as well. I guess Ench needs a buff, if you ask me, John. Just make her creeps permanent. <laughs> oh. Look at this. Look at Ramses. This is what annoys me about this hero, John. You could just look at the tier 3 tower. In fact, never mind that, because mid lane, <laughs> they're going on FNG. Forest Strike is there from Miero, but Vortex is out. GPK going to try and turn it as FNG. Dropping low does end up going down, but they're losing their racks in the meantime. Oh Ramses, God, he'll go. TP into the top racks and it's gone. What is this hero, Ooh. man? It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Ramses, he's gonna BKB <laughs> up. Just TP away. No problem. <laughs> oh man, you know what's funny, Mike? I've been f okay. This, this, I, I know it's a serious game. It's very close. That opens up a little bit of an opportunity for Roche from the rejects because they shove everyone back to base. So have an opportunity to maybe make a play. They are lacking a man, which makes it a bit tough. And outsiders aren't leaving the uh, leaving that triangle. They're still staying there. They're still constantly shrapneling in. They do not want to give Rosh away. So it, it's a tough objective to contest. But again, that emphasis on Roshan is giving Ramses that opportunity, Mike. And it it's it's something you see in your pubs. This happens. This happens to me every night with one of my friends. Uh, except he goes meter hammer and just dies. But he gets the push. You know, this, the concept's the same. You shove in. And if you're not at your base, what can you do? They've, they've left their high ground. They're just allowing this to happen. Mid is not shoved in. And they will try for the Roshan. They do take care of the creep. They drop in low here. Yeah, they, they take the... Oh, they're trying for the Roshan, but they're in. They've got Miero, Pua. He's going to slap the Aegis the way and just take down the Sand King. Because they will find DM to boot. In goes the Press Kid. Just trying to get out of there with the Wind Waker. GPK. Still trying to find a target, but in the meantime, Ramses, he's just split pushing once again, going for the Megas. <laughs> Can he get it done? He's just going to BKB TP out. They can't stop it. It's just oh. not fair. Mid lane, your Mitch is going to go down as they get another side of the Vice out onto the Enchantress. That'll be another. <laughs> I don't know. You want man. something this... radical here, Mike? You want radical that, take? It's time this... for Basher Sniper. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it! You need to stun Ramses when he tries to TP out. You've got the attack speed with a Mjolnir up. You don't need a Divine Rapier, you need a ranged Basher. 10%, more like 100% but enough attack speed there, Mike. Could be one way to stop it. Again, they go for the Roshan, they do take Aegis and the free Ags upgrade. So, I'm not sure who they pass that. They do pass it on to DM. Um, you did manage to steal away the refresh here on the side of CIS Rejects. I believe Cheese as well. That's sitting on our Santin Miero. So they do have a little bit more. You know, they take Roche Gold as well. Not the biggest issue. But the high ground. And I, I think at this point, Outsiders will just stay there. Look at Ramses. Look at him. Just, just here to drop the, drop the babies off. Drop the kids off to school. See you guys later. <laughs> DM will take care of them. Ramses, the you know... He's playing a balanced hero, John. This hero doesn't need a cooldown on teleportation. No. You know, it's only global. Definitely not. Well, like it takes Absolutely. you off the map. Nah. He gets a good snipe on Pure's Courier as well, which was trying to save again for that Divine. Has the gold. So he would have had that Divine up soon. And just high ground hold forever. I mean, 
It, this is the point, okay, so this is the point where outsiders will not leave high ground. They've got good wave clear with the timber saw 2.5 times HP on trees doesn't matter. So they can hold on to these last racks forever. It's down to the rejects to find that opening. <laughs> this is where it just stalls out, Mike. We're 10 minutes away. We might as well try to curse it. 10 minutes uh, away from tier 5 items. We might hit that yeah. point, Mike. And we never do when we say that. Very true, John. Thank you for that. It's divine rapiers, at least. Stomps. I guess that's a tier 5 item in some sense. Pure. We have the divine up now. Here's the thing, though, John. It doesn't feel like damage is the problem for pure. Because, you know, you can't fight the prophet anyway. He's not going for the fight. Unless the idea is, I'm going to delete this hero before he even gets the TP off in time. I, I like your bash idea, though. Yeah, I mean, that's spicier. It's also maybe less smart. You know, you could probably just kill the NP. Uh, it does have a lot of HP, though, Mike. Uh, around 4k with 33 armor. So I'm not sure if you actually have enough with the Divine to plink him in, say, 3 hits, 4 hits. Although he does have pretty good attack speed. Yep. We get that. Uh, we get the live frog reaction once again, Pythian. Can I just have a look at how the, the frog's <laughs> reacting right now? Just need a. No, no, we're not going to get it. Fair enough. We'll wait, we'll wait for the next one. No. Okay. Thank you. We'll wait for the next time around. Give it a few seconds. Yep. It's. Uh, what can you do? This is. This is the game now, Mike. It's TPing in, push your lane, because you can't pierce high ground with sniper and with storms. So you have to just <laughs> TP around. Smoke play out from outsiders, so they'll be dragged away from base for a little bit. This could make or break them. If they don't find that kill, it might not work out. But BK, he's gonna. Oh, that's a great burrow strike, Miro. Oh, no. He sets up perfectly. GPK, he's gone. It's the leash up, the timber saw DM. He's gonna be all right. GPK though, he brought back for this. He wants a team fight. Who have they found? Roger. He'll be targeted, but he's fine. With the Aeon disc, he's gonna be able to get himself out. That's a great burrow out from Yero. They move in for more. Depressed Kid gonna try for the snap fire. Looks like he's got him. Your Mitch gonna go down. In fact, they want more. Burrow Strike is out. That's oh. pure caught out. But never mind, GPK. He's gonna move in after the Sanking. They don't have the backup right now, so Miero just needs to Ooh. run, but pure. He's got plenty of damage, but not against Depressed Kid. No. He might drop with the Divine down, but he's got the Aegis anyway. In the meantime, Megas are being taken by Ramsey, so you've got to be a bit wary of that. Still great Vortex out, but it's not going to be oh. enough pure. He's gone. They're trying to melt them down with the Mortimus Kisses, but it's still not going well enough. GPK, he's going to go down. <laughs> that has to be it. GG's call. Outsiders have seen enough. Tips are out for pure. Oh, uh, what do you do, John? I mean, what do you do? C can you blame Outsiders for losing a game like that? No, I can't. No, I mean, they tried their best. They tried their best to hold, right? Like, they had really good hold with the Timber Saw. They had good counterfight with the Storm. GPK did a lot of work in keeping the Outsiders in that game. It's just not enough at the end of the day. And you saw the balance coming through there. We saw our Live Frog reaction coming out as well. It, it's balance. It was a fight of balance. We had Harpies going around there, Mike. We had the TPs coming through. Um, Pure was doing some really good work. He had really great positioning. Un only really that last fight, he went forward to join in that engagement. He got immediately punished. You know, he was trying to back his team up. The buybacks were coming through. Maybe a little bit of panic from the outsiders. And the rejects managed to take it. Remember, the rejects are a team that got promoted from Div 2. They came through Tour 1, working their way up. And they managed to put a stop to outsiders. Place number 3 in Tour 1. And they have been a bit up and down in D2CL and some third-party tournaments. It has been a bit rocky, but the rejects are here to play. And, you know... Game one, it looked dominant. It took them a little bit longer, but they also had to deal with Sniper Storm. They cleaned it out in the end. Well, I think you said it earlier, John. You said this is the first time in, what, three years that we've casted EEU? And, well, there you go, John. That's the first game we get. Nature's Prophet against Sniper, and they, they don't even fight each other in the end. They just they just wanted to take Raxes. I mean, why the hell not? Well, there you go. I mean, it, it was a great game one. At the very least, it is a best of three, so we are going to have a second chance here to, to see if we can kind of rectify those mistakes with these drafts. Still, it is MLP, Dota, and Donix 5 for now. We are going to head off to a very short break, but right after that break, we'll be back with Game 2's draft. We'll see you then.